Well, welcome back to Houston Newsmakers, where I'm joined by Rice University President David LeBron and Rice University Provost Reginald DeRoche, named as the next president to take the helm this summer. Dr. DeRoche, you didn't get tabbed for this job because you're a nice guy. I mean, that's part of it, I'm sure. Everybody says that. That's unanimous, too. But you've been responsible for a number of changes uh, at the university in your role as provost, research, partnerships, programs, including a diversity and inclusion, equity and inclusion program. How important was it to establish that? I would have thought that perhaps it would have been done sooner, but that you put that in place there. Talk about the importance of that, and what were the challenges you faced along the way in getting that into place? Yeah. And to be clear, I think David has focused on that uh, when, during his presidency, and so I was just really building on some of the things mm -hmm. that uh, David has done during his presidency. But, you know, we, we stood up the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion uh, right as I was coming in as provost, something that we had talked about even when I was dean. Um, and we, we have a great leader in that, in Alex Bird, in that position, and he's really changed uh, the culture and the thinking and, you know, faculty hiring has been exceptional. The last two classes of faculty are the most diverse and most outstanding in, in terms of uh, accomplishments that we've had at Rice. And so it's, it's absolutely important for our students and it's important for our campus. This is uh, the historical perspective does not elude me on what Rice's history had been many, many, for many, many years. It was not inclusive in that regard at all. Did you notice when you came in, not that there were, it was shambles when you came in, but obviously he said you were building on that as you came in. How focused were you on making sure that that diversity that you didn't see was much more prevalent? Well, we really began to focus on it immediately because it was, was in fact a concern I saw when I arrived. And, you know, the, the president, uh, you know, does doesn't control everything directly. At, at, at Rice, uh, the president has pretty strong authority over undergraduate admissions, and so that became one of the first areas we, f we focused. Uh, and, and that's where we were able to move along most rapidly. I think uh, somewhat slower were graduate student admissions. We've made a lot of progress on that, particularly under uh, Reggie and uh, our, our vice, uh, our, our dean of graduate studies, Seichi Matsuda, mm -hmm. uh, and then faculty hiring. And we started making more progress on that a few years ago. But it, it really requires you have to develop a consensus across the university. You have to get people all across the university to run their processes mm -hmm. in ways that are inclusive and really reach out to, to find the talent uh, wherever it is. But I, I think you have, to, you have to build one part of the diversity first in a, in a way, and then that becomes part of what the university is known for and attractive to other people. And then you need to build the other parts or you're not going to maintain right. those other parts right. you build. Well, you, you've been hearing from students about a lot of different things, including you've got the monument of William Marsh Rice on campus, and a lot of people say, well, look, he was the guy who wanted to start this thing for whites only, so maybe he shouldn't be there. And you heard from a task force about what should be done. Your thoughts about that and yours as well on what's going to be next going forward with that. Yeah, and I, and I can certainly defer to David. I know the Board of Trustees is going through a process now in collaboration with a group of faculty to come up with an approach for, for the statue. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that's going to be communicated to the community within uh, the next few months, certainly be before I resume the presidency. Okay. Um, I, I would say that it's important for us to continue to, to um, shed light on the history of the university as well as the history of this founders, uh, of its founder, uh, Mr. Marsh uh, Rice. Um, and at the same time, we also need to continue to, to, to um, confirm our values around diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think we've done that, mm -hmm. uh, certainly, uh, but we need to continue to do that. So you, this, I've noticed something about Rice in the literature and the videos I've seen. I see V2C2 <laughs> on all the Rice literature. I want you to talk about the vision for the second century concept and how it was developed and how that's helped position Rice for where you are right now. So when I, when I came in, we, we started a strategic uh, process, a very inclusive one, conversations around the university, and then developed what we called the V2C, which was the vision for the second uh, century. And that served us very well through the completion of the first campaign I was involved in. That completed around 2013. Uh, and then we, after that, uh, after a couple of years after that, we launched a new strategic planning process, consulted again across the university, and came up with the vision for the second century, second decade. That's where the V2C2 comes up. And we try to lay out what our ambitions were for the university and how we would achieve them. The first time we also laid out a mission statement for the university. Uh, and that's also part of when we began incorporating diversity very explicitly in our mission statement and in our strategic 
plan. We incorporated very specifically our goals with the city of Houston. The V2C said that we wanted to engage with the city of mm -hmm. Houston, and that was very successful. But then when it came time to sort of look at what we have achieved, we asked, well, we've achieved a lot. Do we still need that as a goal? And we said, yeah, we, we need to double down on that goal. Mm -hmm. And the goal became to engage with and empower the success of the city of Houston. And I really want to give a shout out to, to Mayor Turner here, if I, if I may. He's been a terrific partner mm -hmm. for us as we've sought, thought to, sought to really contribute to the city. So the V2C2 is now our strategic plan. I think our new president will come in and make changes as new presidents do, but it guides us in terms of a whole variety of our, our goals and raising our, uh, continuing to raise our uh, research, building a great holistic uh, educational experience for undergraduates, strong supports for graduates, emphasizing the diversity across our entire uh, community, uh, building our international uh, profile and activities, and also our online activities, which are really in some ways changing the mission of the university. So, Dr. DeRoche, how has your relationship with uh, President LeBron helped you grow into the position you're in now and with your priorities going forward as well? Yeah, no, I've, I've learned a great deal from him. I've enjoyed uh, working with him. In some ways, I think we're very complimentary. I'm, I'm very data focused and I'm an engineer at heart. Uh, and he's not, and, uh, and he's, he's a lawyer, which is great too. Uh, <laughs> but I've learned a great deal from him and, and how he operates. And I, you know, his experience is incredible. I'd walk into uh, his office with a challenge and he'd say a few things. I'm like, ah, why didn't I think of that? And so it, it's been a great, great learning experience for me and great partnership, I think. For us. I'm looking forward to hearing more about uh, what's going forward with this and how you're going to take that into the next level. Uh, it's been said that one of the only certainties in life is change and how you react to it is going to make all the difference. When we come back,